So, we are continuing uh, on the different uh, milk pro available in the market in this dairy and food process and uh, products technology is the 49th class and uh, again continuation of the types of milk which are available in the market. right? So, let us look into some more, some more like evaporated milk. Right. So, evaporated milk is, 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 a, is concentrated sterilized milk, uh, it has 50 percent uh, liquid evaporated, it 50 percent of its liquid is evaporated and, and it is homogenized then, then canned, sterilized and cooled. Right. So, 50, this we have said earlier also that 50 percent of the of the of the water is evaporated right. So, but that was sweet that was uh, um, sweetened right and now non and non sweetened evaporated milk is also available and to the tune of 50 percent water is removed and that is called condensed milk in earlier we had said but that was sweetened condensed, but in this case it could be also un non sweetened, but generally condensed milks are uh, sweetened in the reason being uh, that if uh, sugar is added to that, then that serves both sweetening as well as the preservative. So, for that reason sweetening is required and preservative is not externally added. Then like here it has come that uh, condensed milk, right. So, condensed milk is evaporated milk with added sugar. Sugar makes up to 50 percent of the content and it does not need to be sterilized because the sugar helps to preserve it. Both of these milk can be made with whole semi skimmed or skimmed milk, right. You remember? Earlier we had said from 2 percent that is the scheme, semi scheme, right, or whole milk, which we also said earlier 3.25 percent or even more 3.5 standard milk may be 3.5. So, depending on the locality, depending on the controlling agency, this fat content varies widely all over the world, right. But the basic thing that skimmed means you have removed the fat whole, nothing has been removed, partially skimmed that means whether you uh, how much you have removed, whether it is uh, 2 percent, 1.5 percent like that depending on you that you can call it to be semi skimmed. Right. Then, process technology for the manufacturing of the dried milk, another very, very important one, because dried milk, uh, you have seen from your childhood that, uh, yeah, apart from the uh, adult people are taking liquid milk, you have seen people are also. Uh, feeding young uh, this dried milk, right? Milk powder or baby milk, baby food, all these are made from the basic milk, these are all milk products. So, dried milk is one of the very important milk product, which is not only uh, local, lo locality dependent, it is not locality dependent, it is available all over the world, because primarily this is as dried milk is associated with baby food or baby, baby I mean milk, dried milk, right. So, made for the, uh, made for the, for the, for the young babies, right. So, in that case raw milk on arrival at the factory is uh, uh, tested rapidly for 
number one what is the temperature this these are primary factors because if the temperature goes up during bringing then the there which may be chance of uh, milk getting spoiled or some organisms may get uh, developed so that is why the temperature measurement is one of the criteria then the hygiene how good it was hygiene content that is because maybe the container is so shabby that it may uh, it it may induce some uh, infection into the milk and that is not desirable right then uh, antibiotic level that is also required because in many cases nowadays uh, this uh, cow is injected with antibiotics so that either the yield is more or the milk is uh, stayed for a longer time so that is also not desirable then water uh, addition because in most of the cases this uh, adulteration in major cases adulteration could be by adding water of course by adding water means your fat content will go down right so these are when all the things are tested right and uh, adulteration is also tested if there is any adulterant if that is also identified and removed then only you have the whole milk available for making your dried milk remember this dried milk vis a vis baby food is a synonym because uh, i don't know how many of you have seen that uh, of course nowadays even for making tea that dried milk milk powders are available but hopefully it is not so so much popular or so much wide as the liquid milk right but the dried milk in the form of baby food is not only popular it is essential because when after couple of months when the milk availability is going down that time this external milk helps the baby to sustain or to make the required growth right so on acceptance of all this when the milk has come from outside this temperature is quality in terms of antibiotics hygiene water content or uh, or or your adulterants uh, if all these check is over if the milk is found suitable then you bring the milk if you, when it is accepted and pumped in into a silo because uh, when you are we are talking dried milk you need to dry a uh, huge quantity of milk otherwise it will not be economically viable so the before it goes to the dryer so lot of milk you are keeping in one place right and that is in silo right big big containers they are called silo right so this milk is pumped into the silo or that is called for storage tank right and at uh, before the processing plant uh, it goes to the processing plant uh, this can be held at 7 degrees centigrade or a minimum of 5 degrees centigrade 5 degrees the lower the temperature better it is we have said earlier also so 5 degrees better than 7 degree so if if possible 4 5 degrees centigrade this silo temperature is maintained because you don't know when this milk will be going for the processing like so many build so many big big silos are there which are getting filled by the incoming milk and this milk will go for dry getting dried right so that drying process before it takes place you are storing the milk which is accepted right that milk which has been accepted by the quality control people and then this milk is kept at 
low temperature for 4, 5 degrees centigrade till it is going for the processing. Right? Then milk is standardized because it is not that one batch earlier also we said one batch will have one fat content, another batch will have another fat content or solid not fat content that is not desirable. So, you have to standardize and this standardization is based on what you want whether you want skin milk powder or whole milk powder depending on that you have standardized your milk right. So, if this contains now you know so much fat, so much solid not fat. So, this fat to solid not fat ratio that you have already decided and accordingly you have standardized right. Then the microbial quality of the milk because that may you can do with the with the with the microbial analysis that what is the microbial load of the milk powder right. The microbial quality of the uh, milk powder is very important and it is possible at this early stage of processing to take out 99.9% .9 of the microbial load that is possible not by heating right. If you want because heating is a very costly process heating is a costly process. So, by by nine, this 99.9 .9 percent spore formers or bacteria that can be taken off either by bactofugation or maybe by microfiltration prior to the heat treatment. And this microfiltration is done by the molecular sieve or by the the, the, the by uh, filtration right by micro filtration. So, that is done with the help of the smaller uh, membrane uh, having small uh, holes and through that the microbes can be filtered right. So, this micro filtration can be done and can be removed the uh, can remove rather most of the majority of the spore forming organism. Then your the dryer will not have that much load in terms of microbial content right. So, that this is one of the vital step, but because of the price constraint many of the processors do not follow such kind of thing right. So, they directly put it to the dryer so that okay, let it be whatever is there, but it is not it should not be it is better if you can remove the major microbial load or spores for more even by the micro filtration then that helps your 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 next step that is drying step much more smoother much more easier right. This milk is uh, the milk is high temperature short time pasteurized right. Milk is pasteurized at high temperature short time HTST by 72 degrees centigrade at holding uh, 15 seconds right. Holding time is 15 seconds 72 degrees centigrade that is HTST, but in many cases nowadays the people do keep it for more than 15 seconds around 20, 25, 30 seconds or even 35 seconds the holding time they make it because nowadays many heat resistant uh, spore formers are also coming. One such is called MAP M, that is Mycobacterium avium subspecies of tuberculum right. So, tuberculosis is formed and that organism is very very heat sensitive heat resistant and uh, that is why this uh, pasteurization is done at 72 degrees centigrade, but for more than 15 seconds may be 25 35 seconds whatever combination you have 
right that is done then that um, microbacterium uh, mic, uh, para para tuberculosis that is there and and maybe maybe capable of surviving the pasteurization temperature or process in skim milk powder the extent of heat treatment and holding time that can be measured by the whey protein nitrogen index now another term we are coming across is called whey protein nitrogen index or wpni right this whey protein nitrogen index is associated with the skim milk powder right how much you have uh, heated that time temperature combination that can be predicted by the wpni number whey protein nitrogen index this is a number right which measures the amount of undenatured whey protein because if you have um, undenatured whey protein um, uh, more that means your heat treatment was less and if you have undenatured whey protein less that means heat treatment was very high so this wpni is a measure of that undenatured whey protein and this is very uh, very useful parameter to for judging that how the quality of the dried product is right homogenization is not mandatory in this case because whole milk or butter milk processing but is usually applied in order to decrease the free fat content in this case when you are making it then homogenization may not be required the reason being that you are making it dried right so homogenization why we make because the fat comes out from the milk but when milk is dried water is not there so fat is not getting separated so that is why it is not essential but in many cases it is done because this removes the chance of the free fat content that uh, chance is reduced the milk is concentrated in a series of calendrias now calendrias in earlier perhaps i also referred it earlier that there are many vertical tubes like this in the calendria maybe in a drum right in in in, in a drum like that there are many vertical tubes through which in one surface this liquid drops uh, like this and in another surface the uh, steam is passed at high temperature right this is called evaporator calendria and this type of evaporator is uh, available for 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 concentrating right so in this you are concentrating up to 40 to 60% of these solids right up to 40 to 60% solid content you are concentrating prior to the spray drying because this is re reducing the load on the spray dryer right most milk evaporators are today of the falling film type right this is called this calendria most of the evaporators are like that that film forms on this and for and heating is done on the other side by the by the steam right so most of the evaporators are nowadays falling film type where a uh, fine film or milk concentrate is passed down the tubes wetting the surface while steam is on the other side of the tube and the vapors extracted from the center by vacuum right vapors are normally 
recompressed in a vapor recompressor making evaporators very efficient. Now, you imagine that we said that uh, you have this kind of calendria say this is the tube and in this you have in one side milk film and in the other side your steam. So, vapor is coming out and this vapor is what at very high temperature may be depending on the pressure may be closer to 200 degree. Right. So, if you can utilize this vapor then your pressure on the evaporator goes down. So, this vapor is reutilized and that is why it is called recompressor right. So, this is why the vapor recompressor may that makes the evaporator very much efficient. So, water from the evaporators can be recovered and reused evaporation of the milk prior to drying is done for reasons of energy efficiency as it is far cheaper to evaporate the water when the spray, uh, spray uh, with respect to the spray dry right. So, uh, compared to spray drying that evaporation is much much cheaper. The energy used in multipass evaporators with steam vapor recompression is about 10 times less than the spray drying right. So, spray drying is highly costly. So, if uh, that uh, re, uh, with vapor recompression system if you can concentrate first and then if you can send it for the drying then your drying efficiency goes up and the dry, spray drying uh, can be much good better. So, right. So, this is to be done, but again as I said in majority of the cases this type of typical uh, typical good processes are not being followed the reason best known to them, but it is advisable that it should be. Spray drying of milk, spray drying of milk powder involves atomizing concentrated milk or other liquids into a hot air stream of around 182 to 220 degree centigrade. This atomizer may be either a pressure nozzle or may be a centrifugal disc either of this either a small pressure nozzle through which it moves or may be a centrifugal uh, disc right. By controlling the size of the droplets the air temperature and the air flow it is possible to evaporate almost all the moisture right while exposing the solids to relatively low temperatures. Spray drying yields milk powders with excellent solubility, flavor, color, etcetera. This is the most common procedure for manufacturing milk powders, right. Then the spray drying process is typically the spray drying process is typically a two stage process that involves number one the spray dryer at the first stage with a static fluid bed integrated in the base of the drying chamber and the second stage is an, an external vibrating fluid bed right. This product, uh, uh, product is moved through the two stage process quickly to prevent overheating of the powder. Overheating if it is done that again the WPNI that may go up that is why protein nitrogen index or the product may become some color may develop which is not desirable right. Then it enters a system called 
it enters a system called cyclone that simultaneously cools the powder also right then then some new technologies in dairy industry which are nowadays used okay but hopefully uh, today we uh, in this class we may not be able to continue for a long because our time is also now getting limited but even then uh, let me let me let me summarize in that that in the spread right now in this case you will see that uh, the dried milk in many cases this dried milk the rehydration may not be that good right you, you you take some powder put it into the milk uh, into into water and you will see that it forms lumps the moment a lump is formed that means the outside of that is with the water but it is not able to penetrate right so if the lump is formed then it will not be that good so that is why that spread dried is not made to a very very fine in some in many times it is being formed as the globules so that the rehydration becomes very easy because your ultimate purpose is that not the dried milk is to be consumed whether it is in the form of making tea whether it is in the form of mm, taking milk or making re, re uh, hydrating it to milk right or reconstitution this is called reconstituted milk or any such or baby food whatever it be in that case the rehydration that is that milk which you are producing that should be very easily done and it is uh, one to one means if you take one uh, kg of powder then corresponding 8 to 10 kgs of liquid milk you should get that is the idea right but in many cases if the powder is getting lumped then your product is not getting sold so people are taken this into consideration and many cases the small small uh, globules very very small of course minute globular forms are made whose this rehydration capacity or capability is very high and they do rehydrate and uh, make almost all the milk converted into liquid milk and that is used as the either baby food or any other right so in that case of course baby food you it is not only the dried milk but also some other other char characteristics are also associated i am not discussing in particular baby food because uh, because that becomes very much uh, specific in the there also it contains some uh, fat content then fat to protein or fat to uh, this uh, uh, non fat uh, dried uh, that is snf that has to be solid not fat that has to be that fat to snf ratio that uh, for the for the for the baby food is definite and and not only that some additional uh, sweetening agent is also given so that the, the this becomes accept uh, acceptable to the baby right however in all the cases that rehydration of the powders is the backbone or primary because that is to be sold to the market right so with this of different types of milk and milk products we fin finish this class and next we will go to uh, not only in dairy but also in process industry 
nowadays many types or many instruments are being used we will discuss some of them right okay thank you